Hey, welcome back to the Goldwing Project. I have gotten the chrome radiator cowls. I think as as good as they get. Ended up a little cloudy on the front side, but still a lot better than they were, and they still got a pretty decent shine to them. That was done with the cola and tin foil. And then I picked up some of this Turtle Wax Chrome Polish and Rust Remover, which if, in my case I found didn't remove a whole lot of rust, but was pretty good at polishing things up afterwards. This is the, the back side of them. This one does have some spots where the chrome was rubbed away, I'm assuming by the Speedo or brake cable. Something similar. But we're going to live with that. I think this is looking really good as far as my standards go. Some might call that <coughs> moth polishing. It's where uh, you look at it through the eyes of a moth and you're, ooh, shiny! And you just kind of ignore some of the little scratches and minor imperfections. But these are good for me. I'm going to mount them. I got some chrome acorn nuts. I need flat nuts for here at the bottom because it has to fit underneath that front guard. But they will fit in all the other locations and I like the way they look. I also picked up some black chrome acorn nuts to replace the, the stock ones which are the top mounts for the radiator. So, I suppose it's time to mount those on here and then very carefully get everything onto the bike. Okay, cowls are mounted. I'm ready. Ready as I'm going to get anyway. Let that hold it for a second. I still need to get the guard in place. That's looking really good. Let me take you for a little walk around here. And I'll go and tighten everything up. Lord, that looks good. Okay, so once I got things tightened down closer to the frame, 
I took a look at this top mounting nut for the cowl and decided I wasn't comfortable with how close it sits to the frame so I replaced it with uh, one of these flat flat topped chrome cap nuts well, I don't really understand why that one seems to sit closer than this one sorry that doesn't come through very well on camera but there's a little bit more space on this side versus the other side either way the radiator is mounted in now all I have to do is get it connected so I've got the water pump cap down here to put on reattach that hose and I've got to get to that fan connector back in there and get it reconnected so we'll start with the water pump cap down there and go from there so for the water pump cap this isn't gonna be perfect like the OEM hose it doesn't have that bend in it so you kind of have to force that bend into it fortunately this little protector I think helps kind of keep the shape of the hose a little bit I've used a little bit of gasket kinch to hold the o-ring in place on the back side of this while we get the screw started For those of you who might be thinking about undertaking this endeavor with the uh, Napa 7733, just keep in mind that you don't need the whole hose. So make sure that your lengths are correct. I've had to shorten this one twice to get it to swing into place. And now that I'm at tight, before I go any tighter than that, it's time to look up the torque spec. So online I found 5 to 6 foot pounds, so I set my torque wrench for 65 inch pounds. And grab the wrong socket. There we go. Let's take care of that. Just tighten up that hose clamp. It seems quite tight enough. Alright, what we're looking at here 
this upper radiator hose. Now this curve is a lot closer to the factory one. Like, in fact, I'm pretty sure it's dead on, and it, it it might as well be factory. So all we should have to do with this one is. Slide this hose clamp up and out of the way. It's always easier said than done. and try to slip it on. Got it. Ooh. Worked up a good sweat. Just getting that hose on. I think it's on plenty far enough. Now I just gotta get the hose clamp to play a lot. I think that's a good position to tighten that down. Okay, let's go ahead and get this fuel pump and tack drive assembly reinstalled I guess most people just reuse this gasket or seal they're a bit pricey it's like a piece of plastic with gasket, gasket material on each side so, most people just reuse them with some sealant. So, that's what I'm going to do. Using the gasket cinch. A nice layer there on the inside. And just a light brushing on both mating surfaces.
but I did clean a bunch of sealer off of this when I removed it to replace the tack drive seal. This was just gooped up with some silicone. The seal was definitely shot. I don't like that, so I did replace that seal. And just like all the other bolts into these soft aluminum heads, I'm going to go to 70 inch pounds, which is just shy of 6 foot pounds. And it feels good. Alright, so I've got it full of oil now. And I've been really dying to do this, so we're going to do a compression test. And right now I'm on cylinder one. So. Oh. Guess that wasn't really connected. Let's try that again. And that's just, it's, the needle's right in between 125 and 130. We'll call it 127.5 on that one. Okay, finding a good position for this to rest is difficult, so I'm just going to have to hold it. We're on cylinder 2, which is on the left side of the bike in the front. Make sure we're nice and tight in there. And that one's 125. This is cylinder number three, which is in the back on the right. Looks like 120. I doubt that's going to come up at all. And finally, cylinder number four in the back on the left. Hmm. 117.5? Wait, one, yeah. Actually, we call that 112.5. That one's a little bit low, and I kind of expected that. Condition-wise, that was the the worst cylinder. Yeah. Pretty much call that 110. So I installed the spark plug wires that I got off of eBay and put in the fresh spark plugs that I had gapped previously and all four of them are showing a nice spark so everything's looking good here. Those compression values I do expect to come up once everything gets running. The two lowest ones I did do a wet test on them just spraying a little bit of fogging oil in the cylinder through the spark plug port and then repeating the compression test 
and I saw a 10 pound increase on each one so I'm gonna take that as a good sign and the carburetor manifold should be showing up very soon so looking forward to that the carburetor itself is already here so everything will be ready once that manifold shows up to see if we can get this thing to run after that we gotta clean out the tank but before we do that I'll probably start up here in front we need to get new tires front and rear I want to drill the rotors because I hear that helps a lot with stopping the rain it's gonna get all new brake lines new headlight assembly new instrument cluster we're gonna take this tab off the chokes are gonna have the triple trees and these clamps all powder coated once we get them off I've got a whole um, bunch of parts that are already sandblasted and prepped for powder coat including some crash bars they're a much lower profile than the stock ones and they came with some highway pegs they're pretty sweet too they're gonna look even better once they're powder coated so what else is going through powder coat the tail light license plate and turn signal mount that's going through the clamps for the highway pegs also going through the battery box I got a battery box for it that's also going through powder coat so we might do these brake lever purges as you'll notice I I slapped this set of mirrors on there and uh, well, I'm not too happy with them fortunately they were a real cheap buy on eBay still probably one that I shouldn't have made but I did anyway this one is caved in on the back the other one's got a broken stud so only half of it's there about but and they don't look too bad and I wonder if I could pull that out but I went ahead and ordered the correct mirrors because these aren't even the correct mirrors from all the pictures I've seen and they don't appear to be the same length which I don't like either but like I said I ordered the correct ones the speedo cable the throttle cable the mirrors and one of the rubbers for the fork ears is coming from the cmsnl.com and they're UK based so I do take they expect that to take a, a while to get here just like the carburetor manifold has that was ordered probably a month and a half ago so hopefully that shows up soon I do know it's in the states don't know where in the states it is right now it just shows it's in transit so that's where we're at with the Goldwing obviously still need to get a battery for it the next video is going to be um, polishing up the intakes I was asked about my tips for polishing aluminum and these definitely could use some polishing so we're going to go ahead and do that also the boots are a little stiff so we're, I'm going to soak those in power steering fluid I've all, also heard good things about wintergreen or peppermint oil but I've used the power steering fluid trick quite a few times in the past and that was on the 75 so I think that'll probably work out pretty well so next video we're gonna be polishing aluminum while we wait for the last bit of the parts to show up and then once we get it to to fire off probably off of an auxiliary tank we're gonna start going through the front end get the wheel off take the forks off we need to assess the steering bearing 
the head bearings because as I move it you can kind of feel it something not quite right there and it doesn't feel like that when it's on the ground which means there might be some play there hopefully they can just be cleaned up and re-greased but if we have to order new ones then we'll just go ahead and do that but yeah that's that's where I'm going to leave this one for now we'll be back on this real soon thanks for watching catch you next time